When researching what year Jesus was born, most scholars assume the year 4 BC. This date was chosen based on King Herod's reign until his death. So if Jesus is a historical character, which we claim he is, then he had to be born no later than 4 BC, since the Gospels mention King Herod in the narrative. The problem is, the governor of Syria at this time was Varus, while the Gospel of Luke has Quirinius as governor in Syria at the time of Yeshua's birth. So this clearly is a contradiction, or is it? But before the turn of the century, the traditional date for Herod's death was 1 BC, putting the birth of Christ at 2 BC. It was revised when scholars suggested that his reign should be backdated to the reign of his three sons, which are based on Herodian coinage putting his three sons' reign at 4 BC. Another reference used are the historical works of Josephus, which states that Herod's death occurred between a lunar eclipse and a Passover. There was such an occurrence in 4 BC, but that was only a partial eclipse occurring early in the morning. A more dramatic total eclipse occurred in 1 BC which seems to fit more with Josephus' description. What about the coins? Could it be possible that his sons backdated their reign? Or could they have co-reigned with Herod? To see if this is possible, we have to do a quick history recap. There is a Jewish historical book called the Maccabees, which describes the events that occur between the Old and New Testament. A new Jewish line of kings arose, called the Hasmonean dynasty. Now Herod, an Edomite, eventually became a client king of Rome over the Jews by marrying a Jewish princess, Mariamne, a member of the Hasmonean dynasty, to secure his claim to the throne. They had two daughters and two sons. The sons were named Alexander and Aristobulus, but Herod was a very paranoid king. He had Mariamne executed on accounts of treason and adultery. Then decades later, he had their two sons also executed on accounts of high treason. The next in line was his firstborn son, Antipater, with his first wife Doris, whom he had previously exiled in order to marry Mariamne. Antipater was married to a Hasmonean princess who happened to be the cousin of Mariamne. He was also executed on account of treason. Herod also exiled his third wife, who was Jewish, and her son on account of treason. Herod clearly wanted to distance the Jewish Hasmonean bloodline from the throne, and thus the Herodian dynasty was secured. It was after the execution of Antipater, and when Herod named his son Archelaus as king, that the Jews revolted. We theorize that it was this revolt that made his non-Hasmonean sons begin their reign just in case Archelaus would be killed in the riots. This occurred when Varus was governor of Syria. Under Varus, the rebellion was put down, and 2,000 Jewish rebels were crucified. Now that a probable cause is given for the backdating of Herod's non-Hasmonean son's reign, Herod does not have to die in 4 BC. But there still remains a problem. Remember when I said that the apparent contradiction was Luke stating that the governor of Syria was Quirinius? History does not date him as governor of Syria until 6 AD. 
that's off from the proposed birth year of 2 BC for Christ and 1 BC for the death of Herod. So was this conversation for nothing? Not so. And to find out how this is resolved, you will have to watch the movie upon release. But I will leave you with this. When researching who the governor of Syria was between 4 to 1 BC, this is what you get. There is nothing observed that contradicts the Bible.